Hey kids, what's up? So, um, wow, some sunshine in it. Um, but hey, <laughs> you're glad to answer questions. So I hope everybody's well, happy Tuesday. Um, and let's talk data tracking. Good question, um, and this came up in a conversation with um, two different masterminds we were teaching in the past week, two different conversations. I'm kind of combining these, but I thought it was super relevant for this group too. Even though most of you folks are not in our mastermind, this data really does matter, and it's what helps us really stay focused as we launch into any growth cycle, but particularly this end of 2020 and rolling into 2021, knowing what data you're gonna really rock and roll on and what you're gonna really focus on, that data gets really important. So even though most of you folks are not in our mastermind, let's, let's roll into this because this data piece is super, super important. Okay, so first up, there's two sets of data that you need to be tracking while you're prospecting and selling, all right? Super simple, you don't have to overcomplicate this. One set of data is the piece that really holds like the prospecting approach process. So are you getting people uh, from scraping lists, from LinkedIn, from Instagram, from Facebook, um, in Facebook groups, in your own Facebook group, wherever? The steps that you take ultimately to lead up to a sales call, okay? those steps need to be documented. So literally you could just take a spreadsheet and across the top of the spreadsheet, just have columns for every step you take, like um, inviting them to be your Facebook friend or reaching out to them on LinkedIn. And if you have four messages you send out on LinkedIn as you're building a relationship, let's just use that as an example, you would put each of those four messages, like message one, message two, message three, message four at the top, and then you'd have a name that you're inviting to LinkedIn, right? You're inviting this you know, Joe Schmo on LinkedIn, and you sent message one, you sent message two, message three, message four, and then you just put a date in the cells that you sent that, that message on, okay? So you're truly, what's up guys, great to see you. You're truly just logging, here's the entire pattern of the prospecting piece up to the sale call booking, okay? From the time you first meet the person to the time you book a call, that first section. Every step you go through, that's kind of your system, just jot down the system at the top of the page, you know, meshes one, two, three, four, five, whatever. Um, invitation to call, relationship builder, um, invitation to your group, whatever it is that you invite them to in your process. Jot it down at the top in the cells, right? And then Joe Schmo comes down here in line two, under column A, I guess, under name, and then you just put a date for every time you send one of those messages or make that connection. What's up, Sian? good to see you. So just put those dates and connections uh, as you make each one of those things happen, okay? The importance of tracking that is is really important. I'll get there in just a second. But that's the piece that's kind of from, from cold introduction up to the time that you book a sales call. That data piece right there is absolutely so valuable and it's painful to do because you gotta keep up with it and you, you hate going back and forth to the spreadsheet. If you have a VA or somebody helping you with this, have them do that. If you're doing it yourself, it just adds a, a little bit of time but it's so worth it, okay? Because you gotta know which of those pieces are working and why they're working, and we'll adjust that in a second, okay? Now again, this is exactly what we teach in our, like we teach this entire process in our mastermind, and, and this is why I'm bringing it here, because this is not our mastermind conversation, but this is important for all of you for 2021 as you're going through a growth cycle, okay? So this is the same, like this, this works, all right? The second piece is once you book the sales call, then you have another set of data. So pre-sales call booking is one set of data. Post sales call booking is the other set of data, okay? And that's every bit of conversation you have. Once they commit to a strategy call or sales call or something with you, do you remind them? How do you remind them? Do you get on a call with them? What's your sales process like? Like what are the stages? Do you have a sales script? Do you have a sales process that you follow as you're talking to them? Even a loose structure. Just documenting those steps that you go through in a conversation up to the point of them purchasing. Objection, like you could say, well, yes, I reminded them, then we got on the call, then we did some relationship building, then a discovery, then we did, um, you know, a pivot to here's the offer we have, and then we um, offer, and then we do some objection handling, then we talk pricing. There's all those steps, right? Document those steps and start keeping that on a spreadsheet as well. All the steps in that process. That way you can identify where are people falling off of this this entire process from cold introduction all the way through to a closed sale. Okay, now think of it this way. Think of this entire process from cold introduction all the way to a closed sale as being like little little hurdles on a racetrack. So I never ran track, I'm a distance runner, but I, and 
people who run track, I think it's fascinating. The whole hurdle thing and all this that they do is kind of cool. So, but picture you being like on a track or your prospects all coming through this track sequence you've built. You've put all these hurdles in place, right? Life has put hurdles in place and you've got to get them to the end. You've got to get them to the purchase point. Now, if there's like five or 10 different steps you go through from the first introduction you make like on LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram or wherever you prospect at, referrals, whatever it is, there's five or 10 steps from the time you first have an interaction with somebody up to the point they book a sales call. All of those are little hurdles. You're looking to see in your process as you document where people start really knocking over the hurdles, all right? So if there's 10 hurdles, let's say, 10 steps between first cold conversation, cold introduction, to the time they book a call with you, you wanna start tracking that entire process. And if people start really tipping the hurdle, like on step number three, let's say, relationship builder step number three in LinkedIn or Instagram or Facebook or whatever, however you're reaching out, or in a referral conversation, if it's step three or four, whatever that is in your process, where everybody keeps falling off, then fix that step. So you're looking for where those hurdles get tipped over in the race process as people are running that track and running over the hurdles. Where do they keep getting tipped over? Then your job as the entrepreneur, as the strategist in this process, is to figure out why do people keep tripping over that hurdle? Why does that hurdle get knocked down and fix it, all right? Is it not worded correctly? Is your outreach process too fast? Are you not building enough of a relationship? Um, have you copied someone else's script and it doesn't really feel like you reaching your market and it just seems fake or, or too disconnected? Are you using a bot for certain parts of the process that is or isn't working? What, whatever it is, find that tripping point and fix that point. And then, then try to get the crowd going again and get them all running over, a bunch of new prospects, keep prospecting from point one on, keep them going, and then maybe they, they clear step four, then they get stuck on point five. No worries, fix that point five. Now this seems like, oh my gosh, this is painstaking, Chris. This could take a long time. It might, it might, yeah. But you know, it, if you're prospecting actively every day and reaching new people, then you're constantly throwing new people into this little track you're building and you can see where they're getting stuck and where a lot of people are getting tripped up. Then clear that part out, make it better, make it reach them and really use that data to know where the tripping points happen. So that gets them up to the sales call. And then the sales call is the same thing, right? If you have a lot of people falling off, they book a sales call with you, let's say on Zoom or a strategy call of some sort, and then they, they drop off. By the way, if you have questions, fire away, ask them. I know I'm just rattling off things like crazy here, but feel free to ask. If they start dropping off and, and you're like, wait, I booked a sales call and now they're not showing up, then, then that's the hurdle. You gotta, you gotta get them over that hurdle. And you might need a little reminder, a little text reminder, a little video reminder, something somewhere you can reach out to them and just say, hey, don't forget, looking forward to our Zoom call in three days, whatever. Figure that point out. And then once you get them on a sales call, same process, you got all these little hurdles to go through, right? And if you're like, I'm getting tons of sales calls, but nobody's buying, cool. Get a sales process, okay? Use a sales script, use a sales process. The point of a sales script or process is not so you can learn a magic phrase that closes every deal, all right? That's BS. Nobody has a magic phrase that closes every deal. Some, I hear people talk about this stuff, come on. It's gotta be real, it's gotta be authentic, but it does need to sound right and say it right and ask for a commitment. But ultimately, the sales process is just a series of measurements. It's a way for you to say, I know these are important pieces in the conversation to get someone to move forward, and I can track each piece. So if people are connecting to you very warmly relationally, good, that's step one in a sales process, build a relationship. Step two is typically in most sales processes is discover their need, right? If you're discovering well and you're really empathizing and understand their need and that's going well, then you know that's not the break point. If the next step is creating a moment where they're like, oh, I see that you have a solution for that need and they're not catching on to that, then maybe that's your tripping point. Fix it, go back, understand scripts, lean on experts, whatever, fix that point. And then you can go to the next one. If they're, if they're getting to that point, you've built a relationship, you discovered their needs, and you're empathizing with it, and they're having that aha moment that you can solve their problems and you make an offer, and they're saying no to the offer. If everybody assumes, oh, my price is too high, I could lower my prices. No, we haven't gotten that far. Maybe they don't really understand how your offer can really satisfy their need. So maybe you need to clarify that offer and really go back and visit that. Record those Zoom calls, go back and listen to them, understand where's the tripping spot, clear that out of the way and then get most of the crowd moving to the next spot. It is totally a learning process of building this machine of prospecting and selling 
following sequences and seeing where people fall off and where they stay engaged. All of that is vitally important if you want to be successful at your done for you service, your coaching, whatever. All right. We have a done for you service and coaching program, right? And our done for you service has for years, like only existed on referrals. Okay. It, it's still only lists on referrals. We don't run any paid traffic or anything like that. To, we don't do any organic outreach. We literally just do referrals. But even with that, and, and this is where people get kind of lazy and I've been tempted to get lazy too. Even with that, I have to continually look for how are we building referral opportunities? How are we generating new leads? No matter what your process is for bringing in new prospects and getting to a sales call and then taking from sales call to close, measure every step of the process and make sure you're constantly tweaking it, watching it, looking out where people get stuck. Because even if it's been going great for the past, you know, 10 years, this year might have changed your process dramatically simply because the market might have changed dramatically. And if that's happened, then you're going to have to go back and relook at all your steps and measure them. Always be measuring because the measurements allow you to see what's actually happening. Not your impression of did I have a really good week or a really crappy week, not the emotion behind it, but the true science of, okay, I just crammed another 10, another hundred, another thousand people through the process and I can see where they're getting tripped up. That way you can clear the path for them, create little bridges over all the hurdles that are on this little track and then get them to the next stage, next stage, next stage. And then your goal is to keep moving that entire crowd down the line over that final hurdle of choosing you, right? That's what we're here to do. So hope that helps. I know that's nerdy and I know nobody likes talking data tracking, but my job here is, <laughs> is not to make us all feel good. My job here is to tell you the absolute truth and data tracking matters. I hate it. Oh my gosh. I personally hate doing it, but I'm a creative, right? And I like conversations and I like relationships. So logically I would probably not like tracking data as much, but I've learned over the years that that data tracking is, is so valuable, like literally financially so, so valuable. So don't get stuck without the data, track it. If you're just jumping in, go back to the beginning of this and I'll talk through how to do that, but track the data and know what's going on. Okay. That way you can absolutely use the data to know where you're getting stuck on this track because every little piece of prospecting, every little piece of selling the entire sequence, every little piece has hurdles involved. Everybody trips up on hurdles. You just got to get your prospects through all the hurdles. And if you see one that's breaking, fix it, get more people through the hurdles. If you see some place in your sales cycle, it's not working. Go back to your recordings, listen to it, really understand why ask somebody, Hey, here's where I think I'm getting stuck. Here's what I'm saying. Here's what they're saying here. People just stopping here. Why get some outside expertise and lean in and get people past the hurdle so you can get them to the close. That's it. Okay. You all have a great Tuesday. Don't slow down. This year end is amazing. Keep going. Y'all have the hope, the opportunity, the hope with real legs on it, the real actionable hope that people need right now to be able to change what's maybe not gone so well for them or the confusion or the complexity of 2020 as we're shifting into 2021. Everybody's so ready for a change. And there's so much opportunity for that, that you're the ones with the expertise that can guide them through that process. So prospect, 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 don't stop. This is totally the time to crush it, not the time to slow down. Okay, folks. All right. I will talk to you all. Um, what say Tuesday? I'll be back live again on Friday. I take tomorrow off. Um, then I teach in our groups all day on Thursday and then we'll do a Q and a on Friday. So load me up some more questions. Always happy to answer. You have a fantastic rest of the week. We'll talk soon. What's up? Pip, Laura, CN. Great to see y'all. All right. I'm checking out. Bye guys.